If you, if you have a look at India, I mean, it has a couple of good things going for it. First of all, the debt to GDP is not onerous. I mean, it is high, but I don't think uh, the Indian government can continue to add uh, to that uh, debt pile by increasing the amount of deficit. So the budget has to be sort of fairly prudent. The other thing, of course, is that um, India has room to move. Its interest rates are high. It is above the rate of inflation, so uh, the, the central bank in India can step in and help if it needs to. But what it really needs to do is to sort of find ways in which they can improve the infra infrastructure in India. And that is where it can help uh, the lower paid and the unemployment levels. Because if you have shovel-ready projects, improving the railway, improving the road system, improving the housing, I mean, these are things that you can do straight away. And this is almost similar to the blueprint that China had back in uh, the year, I don't know, 2000 onwards, uh, where it was actually sort of using a lot of its money in order to improve its infrastructure. And the moment it did that, then of course, you know, China started to accelerate. The economy of China started to improve because you were connecting all of these cities. Uh, that still has to happen in India, Mandy. Now, I've got to ask you, David, because you, you continue to mention consumers. So I want to put two relatively large countries side by side, the US consumer, the Chinese consumer. Yeah. In terms of your investment decisions this year, which are you betting on more? Uh, the Chinese consumer, yeah, because I think there is a lot of pent up demand in China. I think China is going to continue to grow. Uh, I think uh, America is fairly saturated. But having said that, what you can do, and this is the way I like to play sort of the, the, the consumer uh, trade, which is to have a look at American companies that have a presence in uh, China. And you can read across and say, we can do that also with India. So let's take Starbucks, for instance. Oddly enough, Starbucks has this joint venture in India with Tata. You wouldn't think that the Indian people would be that um, inclined to go and buy a cup of coffee, given that tea is their main, main drink. But, um, Starbucks is saying that it's going to be expanding its chain in India in the same way that Starbucks expanded its chain in China. And again, when you said, when they said, oh, we're going to be uh, introducing coffee to China, a lot of raised eyebrows. Are Chinese ever going to drink coffee? But it is a growing business for them. And so you can play these, um, uh, these consumer trades without actually directly investing in those countries. And Here's a bone of contention for me. If I want to invest in Indian companies, I'm almost forbidden from doing so because I'm neither Indian nor a non-resident Indian. And it's very difficult to buy Indian shares, unless, of course, they are ADRs where you can actually buy them in, uh, uh, in, um, in America. So I, I quite like the banking sector in, in, in India. And as, as a result of that, I looked at a company called uh, HDFC, the Housing Development Corporation of India. I cannot buy the Indian shares, but I can buy the ADRs. And uh, a bank like HDFC would give you exposure to the housing market and the consumers in India.